interaction between biotic and abiotic components. Cycling of matter. The biotic components, that is producers, consumers and decomposers and the abiotic environment depend on one another. There is a relationship of give and take between the two. The abiotic component supplies nutrients to producers. Producers prepare food for consumers. And when producers and consumers die, they are decomposed into simpler substances by decomposers. These simpler substances are put back into the soil, air and water. They are again absorbed by the producers and the cycle is repeated over and over. This is called cycling of matter. Energy flow There is unidirectional flow of energy. The energy captured by autotrophs does not go back to the solar input or the energy which passes to herbivores does not go back to autotrophs. As the energy flows progressively through various trophic levels, it is no longer available to the previous trophic level. As the energy passes from one to the next trophic level, it goes on decreasing. This is due to the energy dissipated as heat during various metabolic activities of the organisms. It is measured as respiration coupled with unutilized energy. In any ecosystem, the energy flows from producers who capture and convert it from the radiant solar energy to primary, secondary, tertiary consumers. Thus, shorter the food chain, greater would be the available food energy and as the length of food chain increases, there is corresponding more loss of energy. Food chains Do you know what is a food chain? Well, food chain is a linkage of organisms within an ecosystem in which each link feeds on the one before it and is fed on by the one after it. Only the first link in the chain is a producer and all the rest are consumers. It rarely happens that an organism eats or is eaten by only one kind of an organism. So, food chains in nature are rarely simple. It is more commonly seen that an organism may feed on several different organisms and in turn be fed upon by several different organisms. Say for instance, an insect may eat the leaves of many kinds of plants and it, in turn, may be eaten by a frog or a lizard, a bird or a mammal. Terrestrial and Aquatic Food Chains Terrestrial Food Chains A food chain found in a grassland or a forest is known as a terrestrial food chain. The figure shows such a food chain. In this food chain, grass is eaten by insect, which is eaten up by the frog. Frog is eaten up by snake, and snake is finally eaten up by the eagle. Similarly, in another food chain, plants on the earth are eaten by a deer. A deer, in turn, is eaten up by a tiger in a food chain. 
Aquatic Food Chain Aquatic food chain occurs in pond, lake, or sea. In it, weeds and other aquatic plants are eaten by small fish, and a small fish is eaten up by a big fish. This makes a food chain. Importance of food chains Each organism plays a definite role in a food chain. Several herbivores, carnivores and omnivores are connected to each other by different food chains. Even if one organism is eliminated, it creates an imbalance in nature. Let's study the following food chain. In this food chain, grains are eaten by rats and rats are eaten by snakes. Somehow, if all the snakes are eliminated from the food chain, the rat population would increase so much that hardly any grain would be left for us. That's something to think about. Food Web In a forest or pond, several food chains are found. These food chains may be interlinked with one another at different stages. Such interlinked network of food chains is called the food web. In a food web, most consumers have more than one source of food. For example, a tiger does not depend only on deer for its food. It can eat many other animals like sambar, rabbit, goat, etc. Similarly, a frog can eat caterpillars or grasshoppers. A snake can eat frog as well as rat. Rats are also eaten by hawks. Likewise, grass is not only eaten by a deer, it is also the food of cow, buffalo and horse. Thus, a plant or animal may belong to several interconnected food chains. This interconnected network of food chains gives rise to a food web. food pyramid. Each level in a food chain is called a trophic level or feeding level. Now trophic levels are the feeding positions in a food chain. All the producers in an ecosystem form the first trophic level. The herbivores form the second trophic level and the first level carnivores form the third trophic level. You must understand that a given living organism does not necessarily occupy the same trophic level at all times. Say for example, grass that is producers is the first trophic level. It gets eaten by rabbit, herbivores, second trophic level. The rabbit in turn gets eaten by snakes, that is carnivores, the third trophic level. In another example, grass, the first trophic level, is eaten by grasshopper, the second trophic level. The grasshopper is eaten by the frog, that is the third trophic level, and the frog in turn is eaten by the snake, the fourth trophic level. Organisms at any trophic level do not pass on all the energy that they have captured from the sun or the previous trophic level. 
Naturally, some energy is used up by them for carrying on their own activities such as breathing, growing and moving. Some energy is lost as heat while it is being converted from one form to another inside the organism's body. It is only the energy left over after all these activities are carried out that is stored in the body tissues of the organism and becomes available to the next trophic level. Energy leaving a trophic level is always much lesser than the energy that has entered it. That is why if the total energy trapped from sunlight by a producer and the quantities of energy that get passed on to each trophic level thereafter is diagrammatically represented, a pyramidal figure is formed. We call this figure an energy pyramid. It shows at a glance how energy travels up a food chain. Most decomposers are fungi or bacteria. Now in the process of feeding, they use the energy left in dead matter and also cause the dead organic matter to break down into simple substances that easily mix with air, water or soil. From here, they are consumed by plants and soon find themselves once again at the beginning of a food chain. Did you get this till now? Okay, carrying on. Decomposers are crucial biotic factors in an ecosystem. If it were not for the decomposers, the nutrients that entered food chains would remain locked up forever in the waste thrown out by the bodies of the organisms and after their deaths in their bodies. Less and less nutrients would remain available to plants and through them to other creatures. The waste would go on building up around us till all life on earth would be overwhelmed by its own wastes. But this does not happen, thankfully. The ultimate source of energy in an ecosystem is the sun. Part of the energy received by an ecosystem from the sun is stored in food molecules by plants. When this energy is transferred from one trophic level to another trophic level, some part of the energy is released in the form of heat and some part is utilized for metabolism. No energy in the ecosystem goes back to the sun. Thus, the flow of energy in an ecosystem is unidirectional. Pyramids of Number, Biomass and Energy It shows the relationships between producers, herbivores and carnivores at successive trophic levels in terms of their numbers. For example, in grassland, the producers which are mainly grasses are always more in number. This number goes on reducing from the base to the apex of the pyramid. The primary consumers like rabbits, mice, etc. are lesser than the number of grasses. As we go in upward direction, that is to secondary, tertiary or top level consumers, as hawks or other birds, their number will be least. 
Thus, the pyramid is upright. In most of the ecosystems, pyramid of biomass is upright, like pyramid of numbers. Producers are always more in biomass than herbivores, and herbivores are more in biomass than the carnivores. However, there are exceptions to this generalization. Can you count the number of small insects feeding on a single big tree? The pyramid of biomass in C is also inverted because the biomass of fishes is more than that of phytoplankton. Pyramid of energy is always upright. It can never be inverted. When energy flows from a particular trophic level to the next, some energy is lost as heat at every step. 